I've shown you a couple of methods for multiplying mixed numbers. Uh, I've shown you the area model, which is a visual model. I've shown you the uh, using the distributive property, which the area model shows you in a visual form. Um, however, if we just understand um, that a mixed number is just another way of writing a common fraction, um, we can think about it in terms of uh, seeing each mixed number as a fraction. So when I say 3 and 2 fifths, I mean 3 wholes and 2 fifths of another whole. So when I say 3 wholes, by looking at the denominator of this fraction, I know that each whole is going to have 5 fifths. So if I have 3 wholes, that means I have 3 times 5 fifths. And 3 times 5 fifths is 15 fifths plus another 2 fifths. And that will give me 17 fifths. So another name for 3 and 2 fifths is 17 fifths. And because I'm finding the product of 3 and 2 fifths and 4 and 1 third using the multiplication smart cut, the, so the, the smart cut is basically just us understanding that a mixed number can be written as a fraction. And I'm not going to use the word improper. Um, I'm just going to call it a fraction because a fraction is a fraction um, no matter if the numerator is uh, anything related to the denominator. It's a fraction. We have a numerator here and a denominator here. So um, I can also change 4 and 1 third into a fraction. Um, because it's the product, I'm going to be multiplying both of these numbers. So 4 wholes is 4 times 3 thirds. And I'm getting that from looking at the denominator. 4 times 3 thirds is 12 thirds. And 1 more third is 13 thirds. So I get 13 thirds here. So by looking at this now, I can multiply fractions by multiplying the numerators um, and then by multiplying the denominators. So this would be 17 times 13 over 5 times 3. And when I multiply 17 times 13, I can basically think about 17 times 13 as this. It's equal to 17 times 10 plus 17 times 3. Because isn't that what 13 is? 13 is 10 and 3. So this is 17 times times 10 and 17 times 3. And when I do that, it's a much easier way for me to calculate in my mind. Oh, sorry, this is times times 3 right here. So we have 170 is 17 times 10 plus 17 times 3. Let's see, 3 times 10 is 30 and 3 times 7 is 21. 30 plus 21 is 51. And then I add up 170 plus 51. Uh, so I have 0 plus 1 because I'm adding up my 1's and that's 1. Uh, and then I can add up my number of 10's. I have 17 10's here and 5 10's here. 17 plus 5 is 22 10's. That's 221. Okay. So we have 221 here. The other way that I could have done this was to multiply 17 times 13 vertically. And 3 times 7 is 21. Put the 2 up here. Uh, 3 times 110 is 3 tens. Plus 2 more tens is 5 tens. So that's where the 5 is going in the tens place. And that's where I'm getting my 51 from. And now I am multiplying 110. This is not 1, this is 110. 110 times 7 is 7 tens. So that 7 will go in the tens place. And then 110 times 110 is 100. So that 1 is going to go in the hundreds place. We have 1s, 10s, hundreds. And then when I add it up, I still get the same. The same product. Okay, so now I'm going to multiply 
5 times 3, very simple, 15. Okay, when I do this, now I have to divide 20, 221 by 15. Essentially what I'm saying is I'm trying to figure out how many holes I have in this. I know I can change it to a mixed number because it takes 15 fifteenths to make one hole. And I know that I have more than that, so I can change this to a mixed number. Okay? So I'm going to divide 15 into 221. All right, 15. If, if I think about this, just use my number sense. Um, I can say 15 times 1 is 15. 15 times 10 is 150. 15 times 100 is 1,500. 1,500 is more than 221. So I know the answer is going to be in the tens place. So we'll start right there. So 15 times 10 was 150. So I know the answer has to be more than, more than uh, 15 times 10. So 15 times, let's see, 15 times 10 is 150. Um, four more would be 60, 100, would be 60 more than 150. So I know that's 210. So let's try, Fourteen times. Let's see if that works. All right. So, one hundred fifty. So fifteen uh, times ten gives me one hundred fifty. Or fifteen goes into twenty-two one time. And twenty-two minus seven is seven. Twenty-two minus fifteen is seven. And pull down this one here. Fifteen goes into seventy-one. I think I said four more times because I know 60, four times 15 is 60. And we get a remainder of 11 here. So the answer is 14 whole times and 11 fifteenths another time. So the answer is 14 and 11 fifteenths. Now, that's how we divide when we're trying to think about a two-digit divisor going into a, um, a dividend. When you do this, it doesn't take this long, though. I was just showing you my thinking process to show you how I figured this out. Um, but you could basically say 15 goes into tw 22 one time. 1 times 15 is 15. Uh, 22 minus 15 is 7. And then pull down this 1 here. And then 15 goes into 71 now, 4 times. 4 times 15 is 60. And 71 minus 60 is 11. Now, you didn't have to go through all of, all of that thinking that I did before. I just wanted to show you a mental way of trying to calculate what the, um, what the quotient was going to be when you divided. So um, the product to 3 and 2 fifths and 4 and 1 third is 14 and 11 fifteenths. And as we've seen through our entire, um, our entire video series on this one problem, uh, we're getting the same product all the time because the problem's not changing. I'm just showing you multiple methods to getting the answer. So this is going to be your fastest way, provided that you understand um, how to divide using um, by a multi-digit divisor. As long as you understand this, you can use this method um, for a lot of the time. Um, and if you need to go back to the area model or the, distri or the distributive um, property using that, uh, you can go back there and use that as well. This is just another strategy to multiply mixed numbers. And this will be your sure bet way to always get the answer in a quick and efficient way, again, provided that you really understand how to divide with a multi-digit divisor. Okay, hope you enjoyed and continue learning. And... Uh, finding out as much as you can about math. Take care.